Um, one of the things I'm really interested in, I feel like it's like literally like a trillion dollar question in the industry right now is all these institutions that are coming in, how much do they resemble the retail investors that came before them versus their new breed of investor? And what I mean by that is, um, you know, do they really have strong hands? Or not. So one of the things is yeah. look at Bitcoin as a market structure, right? We know that 60% of Bitcoin or so hasn't moved in the last 12 months. We know that more and more uh, Bitcoin is coming off of exchanges on a daily basis, right? Mm -hmm. And so you basically have this uh, majority of Bitcoin that is held by quote unquote strong hands. People who they're not trading, they're not looking to sell regardless of price volatility up or down. Like they just, they hold for a long period of time. Institutions come in, and frankly, there's like two different arguments, right? There's one argument that says, oh, they're big institutions. They don't care about the volatility. They're going to hold very strong. Uh, whether the price goes up or down, they're not going to go and just dump all the um, you know, Bitcoin. They're doing this because they're in the industry, right? Like they, they had to go through a lot of pain and probably internal hurdles and, and bureaucracy to do it, so they're in. The other argument is Bitcoin drops 50% and the first people run into the door is Tesla and JP Morgan and you know Goldman and whoever, and they're just getting this thing off their balance sheet and like they actually are going to be the weakest hands in the room. Maybe the truth's somewhere in between there, but just how do you think about like institutions compared to uh, what to some degree is almost like a non-economic actor that has been the retail investors that have you know really kind of built this industry over the last uh, decade or so? Yeah, so I think we should um, specify a little bit. The umbrella term of institutional investors is too broad. If we compare family offices and ultra high net worth individuals who are, I would argue, the driving force of quote unquote institutional adoption in crypto today, they resemble a lot of retail mm -hmm. in many ways. It's a much larger check, mm -hmm. but it's sometimes driven by the same considerations. We're still not doing heavy investment committee meetings and the bureaucracy that's associated with it. Sometimes it can be driven by a single or a group, um, a single individual or a group. And largely the reasons that have attracted retail, and the, by the way, the reasons that have attracted early adopters like us, because I would argue we're, we're not quite retail or institutional, are the same. Um, a lot of people are concerned with the amount of money printing going on. A lot of people are concerned with the inflation or lack thereof. A lot of people are concerned about geopolitical risk. And family offices are usually based on an individual or a family, and they're equally concerned about the same things. And so I wouldn't worry too much about hands um, when it comes to ultra high net worth and family offices. And in our experience, they're pretty pretty damn strong hands. Um, the price sometimes gyrates in, in a wild and crazy fashion and they don't move. Oftentimes they buy more. And um, you know our, our, our first product was called HODL for a reason. And I, I, I think that that really translates one-to-one -one for them. On the trading side, we started seeing um, some trading firms go in um, and they're very different. They're just a different breed. They're looking to make short-term profits, and they're and they're advertising it, um, right? They, they're not shy about it. That, that is what they do. Uh, but I would say that anyone who makes an investment in crypto, a meaningful one, in my experience, at least talking to European family offices, they're planning on 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 holding it in a similar uh, on a similar time horizon as a VC fund, as a, being an LP in a VC fund, which you know seven to 10 years minimum, that kind of thing. 